Uh, welcome everyone. So this is our 45th live stream geometry and we already have me and five other people here with us. Uh, so today I chose a bunch of problems from a 2012 mock uh, USAMO uh, geometry contest. So it was uh, created a while back. It's supposed to be like the USAMO, so the USA Math Olympiad, but only geometry. And then I also chose two other problems um, shown to me uh, from the Indonesia uh, Math Olympiad shortlist. Um, so with that, I am going to get started. Let me share my, my screen. All right, so here's the first problem. Can you guys all see it? It looks a little bit easier. Um, so we have a semicircle with center O, and O lies on a line L. Uh, hold on just a second. So I'm gonna draw the whole circle just because why not? So O is the center. And then it lies on a certain line L. So I'll just draw, I'll just say this is line L. And then we have points C and D. So C and D are on the circle. And we draw the tangents at C and D. Oh, whoops, that D is not on the circle. <laughs> Let me uh, erase that D and draw another one. All right. And the tangents intersect it at B and A. So I'm gonna to have to rename some stuff. So this is B. Um, yeah. Um, we usually solve P1 to P4. We can solve harder in the next session. Yeah. So um, this is B, this is A. And I could call this K for now. Um, and yeah, O lies between B and A. Uh, let E be the intersection point between A, C, and B, D. This problem actually looks really familiar. Um, so this is, E right here. Let F be um, the perpendicular from E to AB. And we want to show that, whoops, we want to show that EF bisects angle CFD. So it looks like these concur, the perpendicular and these two tangents. I don't know the proof of it yet, but it looks true. So let me uh, delete a few things and let me hide a few things. But let me draw on this point right here. So I don't know that they concur, but I wanna draw those three in. So sorry, hide that, hide that, hide that, and hide that. So we have this, this, and this. So first of all, is it obvious that EF, um, BC, and AD concur at G? After proving it, we are done. Uh, well, if we can prove that, then we're done. Uh, oh, oh, because then it's just true by Blanchett's theorem, right? Yeah. yeah. So. We want to show that EF, BC, and AB uh, concur. So one way I was thinking radical axis theorem, maybe we could use Cheva, maybe we could use Pascal's. 
Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we could extend this to meet the circle at another point down here and then somehow use Pascal's. So GC is equal to GD. So that might help us use Cheva's theorem, right? Wonder if there's any similar triangles because we have we know we probably have a few right angles because it's a semicircle, right? So yeah, we could restate the problem. We could let these tangents meet at point G, and then we want to show that GE is perpendicular to AB. Um, One way to do it. You let C D intersect A B. Uh yeah. Right. Hmm. Yeah, how would we use Chava's theorem? Can you name the intersection of BD and CA with circle. Oh, these two points? Yeah. These two points and I are collinear. If we can prove it, then uh, it's obvious by Brockhart. Okay. So if we can show that I, J, and K are collinear. Can you check it? First, maybe oh, yeah. I was thinking wrong. I, J, and L. That looks true. Okay, if we prove it, then we are done. Okay. Uh, G is on the pole of I. Um, so I is on the polar of G. Well, yeah, yeah, G is on the polar of I. So... And then can we show E is on the polar of I. So if we could show G is on the polar of I and E is on the polar of I, then that should prove, that should solve the problem. So E is on the polar of I, if and only if I is on the polar of E. I wonder if BCDA is cyclic. Because then maybe we could just use Ricard. It's impossible, actually. No. Yeah, you're right. But CJLD is cyclic. Yeah, so you're right. We, we're done by, well,
Okay, we are done by Pascal. Okay. C C L J D D. All right. So uh, if we use Pascal's on that, then we know that C E. Okay. Let's start typing it up. Let me see if I can. Um, Oops. We make this just to make room for the proof. Okay, so C C J L D D. So uh, basically that means that G E. Well, so 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 what does that prove? Sorry, let, let, let me write it out. C, C, J, L. That proves that uh, J, L, and I are concurrent. Are, are collinear. Okay. So. Collinear. Is that, are you sure that's, wait, C, C, let, let me write this out. C, C, J, L, D, D. Yeah, we first look at the intersection of CC and JD. CC and AD. CC and JD. CC and JD. Ah, okay. So CC and JD, and then BD and LC. Yeah, which is A. And then CD and JL. Ah, okay, nice. So, so basically... Um, if I hide this for a second, then I can say let BD and AC meet the circle at J and L. Then let CD intersect JL at I. Um, and then we have um, CC intersects JD. at B and uh, DD intersects uh, LC at A. Did we ever use that this is a semicircle? I don't know if we ever used that. So, so by Pascal's theorem, I, B, and A are collinear. I think we ever used that it was a semicircle. I think the problem is true in general. Actually, we use it for Ricard, I think. For Ricard? Okay. Yeah. Because OI and AB are the same line if it's the semicircle. Oh, okay. So, um, so then, then by Ricard's theorem, um, B is the polar of I. So I O is perpendicular to G E. So so G E, but but wouldn't it be not G like? Okay, so we know E lies uh, on the polar of we I. Need one more Pascal actually. I don't I, I actually I think we're good. So so by Ricard's theorem, E lies on the polar of I. 
Um, and then also, so E lies in the plur of I. And also, uh, I lies on the polar of G, so G lies on the polar of I. So we have that. And so G E is the polar of I. And then uh, once we know that, since I lies on, um, basically that means GE is perpendicular to, to IO. Actually, I kind of just assumed, I, I should probably just, I should probably just call this F prime here, right? So, because, so I'll say let, let the tangents at C and D meet at G. Just for the, the YouTube viewers, I know it's probably obvious for us. Let G E, uh, meet a b at f prime okay and so um that that, that th this means that f prime equals f And, and so then by Blanchett's theorem, so this is a previous video. Um, um, EF by sex angle C up B. All right, nice solution. I sent uh, some problems to the uh, Discord server for the next session. Oh, really? Are, are those the math beyond limits problems? No, uh, we can solve these two for the next next sessions. All right, for sounds future. good. So, uh, so, for, so for the math beyond limits ones, do you know if um, if there's like a certain deadline that people have to submit it by? Um, because I don't want to do it when people are still like, if the deadline hasn't passed yet, I don't Actually, want to. It's, it's passed. Oh, I the deadline already passed? Online. I guess it's not online, is it? Uh, if they are posted on IOPS, then it's okay to solve them. Okay. I saw, so, so yeah, I'll check for that. Um, but yeah, maybe it's already passed. Um, so here's the next. So actually, I want to do this one next. This one looked kind of interesting. Um, so we have a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD. Actually, let me draw it slightly differently. Let me draw it like this. A, B, C, D. And then we draw the circle through D tangent to AB and the circle through C tangent to AB. So, or tangent at A and, and at B. So let's see what that looks like. So basically we wanna draw the perpendicular bisector of AB. Um, And we want to see where it meets the perpendicular 
at A to AB. Okay, so this is one of the centers. And then the other one would be there. Um, so this point and this point, those are two of the centers. Actually, this is through C. It is what? This is through C. It's true C. Uh, 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 oh, through through C. You're right. Um, so okay. So let me draw. You're right. So that circle. F. Oh, F, yeah. In fact, it might not even be worth drawing the circles because I have the perpendicular bisectors. Um, so basically it would be uh, this point and uh, this point right here. So we want to show that E, F, G, and H. Um, do, do you want me to draw the circles or should I just draw these perpendicular lines and the, the perpendicular? I, I think it might be easier. Yeah, let, let, let me hide the circles for now actually. So I'm going to keep those two lines. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, Can you hide the FC? Uh, hold on just a sec. So, so this is actually the center of the circle. So I'll call it O. Um, FC, yeah, I'm going to hide FC. Um, and then Actually, now that I um, defined O, I can hide a bunch of stuff. So basically, these are the perpendicular bisectors. And then HD is perpendicular. FC is perpendicular. To, to And then these two are perpendicular to AB. And we want to show that HEGF is cyclic. Um, let's see. Just trying to get a good diagram. I don't want to make it look like these are tangent to the circle. I think that looks good. So I could, I could change the names to O1, um, okay, so this, this should be O1, just to match the problem, and then this is O2. This is O3. And this is O4. Uh, is O1, oh, I could probably, yeah, try to use PowerPoint. So O01 times O04. Yeah, maybe that's just true. That would make it easy then. Um, so I could try to check angles. So that would be true. I don't think it's true um, because then angle OAO1 
would equal angle O, O four A. Um, oops, yeah. Um, but hmm. yeah, it looks like power of the point, power of a point is like the most obvious way to try this. Or we could try to show angle O, O, 4, O, 3 is angle O, O, 2, O, 1. So yeah, maybe it maybe it would help to label the midpoints of A, D, and B, C. Can you draw the perpendiculars from O to A, B, and C, D? Yes. This problem looks like similarity problem. Yeah. Then maybe I could draw the perpendiculars from O1 and O2 to CD and O3 and O4 to AB. I think we don't need it. We can calculate O1, OO1 from AB and angles. So OO1, it's like AB, it's like AH times the sine of um, some angle. And O02, we can do the same, and we can do the same with O3 and O4. Um, yes, O01 is the uh, is H times sine of uh, 90 minus. This. So it's really the cosine of this angle. Yeah, 90 yes. minus A. No, uh, 180 minus A. 180 minus A. Okay. So um so let, let, let me write this out so o o one is uh o o one is equal to a h um times sine of angle O one O H I don't usually use trigonometry, but I feel like it makes this look easier. So um and that so angle O one uh, OH is hmm. the sum of angle O01, uh, O1, OH, and O3, OG. Uh, O3, OG? Yeah. Uh, they, sum up, they sum up to 180. So O O one H and A O one O add up to one eighty, right? No, O one O H and O three O G. O three O G. Um, I'm trying. Is that obvious that they add up to one eighty? I'm trying to think. Yeah, because if you see these cyclic. Because it's cyclic. Okay, so O one O H is the same as one hundred eighty minus A, and F O G is the same as one hundred eighty minus C. And okay. we know that A plus C is 
180. I, I think I think what you basically used is that um, O one O H is half of D O B, right? Because because this bisects A O D and this bisects A O B, right? Yeah. Or maybe you thought, oh, oh no, you could just use that. This is a A A E O H has two right angles. That's how you did it. Okay. Yeah, because A and C sum up to one hundred eighty. Yeah, so, um, so, so this is AH sine O3OG. And so, so okay. So then we should do the same with O O two. Um, so similarly, O O two is B H. We don't need the last one. Okay. Two, we, we don't need 002 or, or I guess we could just find 004 right yeah we can find 001 002 mm -hmm. uh, in terms of AH and the angles A and B we can also find that 003 and 004 in terms of uh, GC and the angles D and C uh, GC and AH uh, gets cancelled then we have mm -hmm. two ratios of angles and we can use that A equals to C, sine of A equals to sine of C, and sine of B equals to sine of D. Actually, I think I think all we need to do is um, like just show that 001 times 004 is 002 times 003. And I could just calculate 001 times 004 and then say by the same argument, it would get you to the same thing. Yeah. I think that's how it O. O O one H equals B C D. No, I, I don't think that's true. Well, uh, 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 oh, no, 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 actually, yeah, it, it is true. O O one O O one O H is angle B C D, but that's true. So basically, I have O O four. Um, is equal to. Um, that would be equal to GD um, sine D of times sine of D. Yeah, so that's GD sine of O O four D, which is uh, GD sine of uh, one. 180 minus 004 OG. Which is which is um, GD sine D. All right. And so, um, so O O one times O O four is equal to A H times G D. Um, so, so, so yeah, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase this last part here. So this is sine 180 minus a sine of b, and then similarly, we can do o2 times o4.
for O O three is equal to, so that would be B H times G C times sine um, uh, Actually, we can just say that it is symmetric. It, it, exactly. That, that, that's basically what I'm doing. So 180 minus, um, so, so, so sine C uh, sine of um, 180 minus B. And then it's clear that those two are the same, right? Whoops. So basically, it's easy to see that these two expressions are equal, right? So the above two expressions are equal since uh, AH equals BH and GD equals DC. Um, so therefore, Therefore, we have that it's cyclic. Two, oh, three, oh, four is cyclic. All right. So let me um, just put up here just stuff. Um, I'll just say O one O four passes through it because we kind of just assume this the circumcenter O of um, I'll just say so does O two O three. And um, uh, um, O for D is perpendicular to CD and similarly with other perpendiculars. All right, sounds good. I like the solution. So yeah, not the hardest problem. Um, so here's the next one. Okay, this one looked a little tricky. So we have an isosceles trapezoid um, with bases A, B, and C, D. Um, okay, so let me draw it this way. Because since it's an isosceles trapezoid, it's cyclic. So, so we have a point E um, on AB, so that angle DEC is equal to angle DAB. So basically what that means, so I'm gonna try to draw it exact, but um, so I thought about this just for a second. And basically, if DEC is equal to DAB, um, then that means that triangle DEC is similar to triangle DAE, right? Because this angle equals this angle. So, so yeah, so that would mean triangle DEC is equal to, is similar to triangle DAE. And that would mean that um, that would mean that this angle ECD is equal to uh, DAE. So, so really, we want to draw we want to draw the circle passing through D tangent to AD. So I'm gonna. So, oh, oops, no, no, yeah, we want to draw a circle passing through D. Um, 
Uh, oh no, we want the intersection of the perpendicular bisector BE with the perpendicular through D to AD there. That would be the center of that circle. Okay, so basically um, I, I'm, I'm gonna delete point E for now. I think what we want, uh oh, whoops, no, the perpendicular bisector of, uh, of AD because we don't know yet where E is. Wait a sec, this is, this is confusing me. Let me read the chat. DEC is tangent, hold on a sec. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to construct point E. We want so we want angle ADE to equal angle ECD. Yeah, how do we do this? I thought I thought I had it for a second. Uh, So basically, let me draw the circumcircle of AD. Oh, you, Oh, you know what? Let, let me let me redo this for a sec. So let's say let's say that we had a point E like that. So that this angle was equal to this angle. Yeah, let me delete this circle. I think I have an idea of what I need to do. If I draw the circumcircle of CED. There we go. I would want that circle. I would want AB to be tangent to um, that circle. So I want to circle through C and D and tangent to AB. Uh, uh, no, uh, I think that um, thank um, in so called D A E is tension to E C, not uh not yeah not e is tangent to E C. Yeah, E C is tension to D A E. Oh, because, uh, I guess the problem is I don't know yet where E is, right? I'm trying to figure out where E is. Um but 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 I think this would work. Hold, hold, hold on just a second. So um how, how do I draw a circle? How do I draw a circle through C and B and tangent to AB? Um, so, so how do I find a point? Um, oh, you know what? I would need the midpoint of AB. Hold on just a second. So, so, so this is the midpoint of AB right here. So I want yeah, to- I guess I found, uh, what are you trying to construct? Um, the circle, okay. So this circle, 
Oh no, I don't think that works. I think Sorry. circle which is tangent to BC at C and AD at D works. Okay, so tangent to BC at C and AD at D. Okay. Sorry, I think Fung had an idea, but um, so so this circle, I'd I'd try to see where it intersects AB. Okay, so let, let me get rid of point E. Um, because I'm trying to I'm trying to solve for point E. And I let me make let me redo the diagram so they intersect. Okay. So One basically this point uh, is useful. One so this 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 might be point E right here, right? Yeah. Okay. We can see it works uh, if you intersect B E with B C. Okay, hold on just a second. Yes. So see that you can intersect E with BC why it works. Inter intersect D E with BC? Yeah. So so if we do that, well, then we have angle D E C. Um uh, DC equals to uh, DC and the point on the extension of DC. Oh, actually, I, I see a different reason why it's true. But so angle ADE uh, would be equal to angle ECD. And, and then also angle AED is EDC. Yeah. So, so then if you do 180 minus both. Okay. So that, that, that makes sense to me. Um, all right. So... We found a way to make point uh, point E. So sorry, Dad. Was was that kind of what you were thinking? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I mean, um, the 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 uh, the point E is um uh is the point that uh, the circle ADE must be tangent to the line AC. Oh yeah. Uh, so, 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 so AD, you're saying a, the circle ADE is tangent to EC, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing is we don't, we're trying to use GeoGebra to figure out where point E is. So we'd kind of have to just move it around to figure it out that way. Um, but okay, but once we, once we know point E is there, then we know, like, we, like you said, that uh, ADE, we know that EC is tangent. So that could help later on. Okay. Um, so I still actually haven't written the rest of the question up yet. So let FC. So I'll call this I'll call this O instead of F. In fact, I might as well just hide uh, that segment for now. So FC and FD. The circumcircles of A, E, D, and B, E, C intersect at F. Okay. And then F, C, and F, D intersect A, B at G and H. Can you hide first circle we draw we drew? Yeah, I can hide that. So um D A uh, D A meets B C at J. Okay.
So yeah, by symmetry, BE is also tangent to the other circle. Uh, let me move this down. Okay, so that's point J right there. Okay, we want to show that HJ is tangent to the circumcircle of FGJ. Do you want to hide the circumcircle BEC? Yeah, it would be better. Okay. Uh, F, E, J are collinear. F, E, and J. By power of a point, because... Oh, because A, B, C, oh, radical axis theorem, yeah. Because A, B, C, D is cyclic. Okay. Um, So I guess we could try to show hj squared is he times hg, or just you see the uh, intersection of the circumcircle of fj, g, and the line ab. Can you name it? Yeah. Oh, is it a? Oh. It might be a. I'm not positive, but uh, ah, it looks like f g a j is. Let's prove it then. Yeah. So I'm gonna hide it for now just because we're proving it, but we could add it later. So we wanna show F, G, A, J is cyclic. Well, it's trivial actually. It is enough to prove that B, F, C, and J are cyclic. Uh, it is just angle chasing. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, because angle F, J, C, we can kind of calculate um, as 180 minus this, minus this, and angle F, A, uh, F, A, G is F, A, E, which is F, D, E. So I think, I think that would do it, but let's see. Okay, J, A, G is, okay, J, A, B. So I'm gonna write out what Jaleel just said. All right, so we have angle JAB is JBA, which is JFG. So if JAB is JFG, then yeah, it's, 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 it's easy. So, so JAFG is cyclic. And no, if we prove that B is parallel to HJ, then we are done. Uh, parallel to AJ? Uh, HJ is parallel to DE. Uh, DE, okay. If we prove it, then we are done by angle chasing. Okay.
Yeah, similarly, JBFH is cyclic. Yeah, let me let me move this to the the left. Um, similarly, J B H F is cyclic. Uh, it is uh, obvious to prove uh, uh, BC and uh, GJ is a uh, uh, parallel. Okay. Maybe? Yeah, uh, that is because um, uh, angle JGA mm -hmm. uh, is equal to angle JFA, and that is uh, angle. Uh, ADE, A, which is angle uh, ADE. Yeah, ADE. But uh, I have uh, said before that uh, C is uh, tension to um, uh, the circle A, AD, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, angle ADE will be equal to angle CEB. Okay. I wonder if it's yeah. even easier. So, so angle JGE. Um, is equal to angle J. Um, we we want to show it's angle GEC, but this is tangent. So yeah, we're using the tangent that you mentioned, right? So yeah, but, uh, yes. Be because uh, DEC is equal to DAE, so EC is tangent to angle ADE. Yeah. yeah. So but, angle E. CEB will be equal to angle ADE. Okay, so so angle JGE is JGA, which is equal to uh, JGA is JFA. EFA and EFA is EDA. And EDA um, basically is CEG from the tangency. Um, yeah. From similarity, I guess. So, so, so. Um, so we prove the parallelity. So, 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 so yeah, so that proves the parallelism because if, if uh, JGE is CEG, then JG is parallel to CE. Um, Actually, we need the parallelity that HJ is parallel to DE, but they are the same. There's yeah. Symmetry. So after that, we can angle chase to show that HGA equals to HGA is equal to what? No, we angle chase actually not similarly. Okay, well, hold on a sec. Similarly, H HJ is parallel to DE. And then, angle chase. okay, so now angle HGA, or, or no, not HGA. HJA. Uh, okay, HJA. Uh, it equals to ADE. Uh, so it equals to AFE, and it equals to AGJ. Okay, so, so then we have uh, angle HJA equals angle JDE. Uh, 
um, which is equal to AFE. Which is equal to angle. I, I actually, I think that's enough because it's equal to angle AFE. If that's true, if, if, if angle HJA is equal to angle AFJ, um, then that means that HJ is tangent to the circle. So there's one thing that we still have to write out. So um, in this step, I used that CE was tangent to the circle. And I think that's just an angle chase, right? Um, because um, that would mean angle D, oh, since angle DEC is DAB, that means that DC is tangent, okay. So, to be a and then I, I using I use that tangency in this step. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, but I didn't even, oh, I forgot to mention the radical axis theorem. So, um, so ABCD is cyclic by um, by the radical axis theorem. A, D, B, C, and E, F concur at J. So I think that's it for that problem. Let's check out the next one. Um, so yeah, this had a short solution I saw, so it might not be that hard. Um, so we have a uh, Q triangle ABC. And we draw the circle passing through A and B and tangent to BC. All right. So that circle. Oh, but it, does it have to be tangent at B? Yeah, because it passes through B. So it has to be. I have to rename this point. Call it K. Whoops. Now uh, let D be a point on this circle. So D is, let's say right here, and AD meets BC at E. And BD meets the circle at F. And the tangent at C uh, 
um, meets AF at G. And X is the center. Okay, so this should actually be Y. And X is the center of the other circle. And we want to show that AXY is similar to AG. All right. Like this. It's a lot of information here. Uh, B, D, and F are collinear. Uh, a, F, and G are collinear, and G, C is tangent. I think that's everything. So yeah, D is arbitrary. That's um, one of the important points in this problem. So yeah, it's basically, we want to show a spiral similarity takes AYX to AEG. Is it obvious that angle YAX is angle EAG? Uh, I have a solution for this. Uh, okay. Maybe kind of easy. No, okay. no. So um, we claim that, uh, um, Triangle ABD mm -hmm. is similar to triangle ACF. Okay, ABD is similar to ACF. So, which means that ADF is similar to ABC, right? Mm -hmm. And that is uh, AYX too. So, ADF will be similar to AYX. Um, so, ADF is similar to AYX. Yeah, and just uh, do the uh, angle chase. Uh, okay. A X uh, Y is a half of A X B, and that that is uh, A F D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same with um, A Y X. So um, we need to prove that A D F is similar to A E G, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that that is because uh, uh, triangle A B D is um, similar to A F. C and the tension of B, which means C uh, to two triangle ABD in ACF, cut uh, AD and AF at uh, A and G. So the four point ABD, ABDE, and ACF, G is similar. Or similar. Ah, nice. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, AD uh, over AE is equal to AF over AG. Yeah. And okay. uh, ADF will be similar to ADG, AEG, yeah. Okay, so first we want to show, um, so ABD is similar to AFC, that should just be an angle chase. Um, yeah, yeah, only angle chase. Okay, so, um, so angle ABD, so we have angle ABD, equals angle ABF equals angle ACF. Um, and, and then we also have, um, using the tangent C, basically angle, angle AFC is 180 minus ABC, which is ADB, okay? So we have angle AFC is 180 minus angle ABC, which is angle um, ADB using the tangency.
we see. And so uh, spiral similarity takes ADF to ABC. And so, so, so therefore, um, or, or, or a, I'll say ABB a, to AFC, and then we can get the other one. So, so if this is true, then that means ADF is similar to ABC. And then um, AYX is, is also similar um, to ADF. That's, that's obvious by an angle chase because angle AXY is half of angle AXB. So we have and that's angle AFD. Uh, And then we need one more angle, right? So angle YAX, that's probably the, the easiest one. Um, well, one sec. So AXY, um, and then AYX is equal to angle BYX. Um, and then How do we how do we do that? BYX is ninety minus YBA. Uh, what uh, we need? Uh, what Michael? Uh, oh, oh, oh I, I I think I have it actually. So, um, so 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 you said angle AYX is similar to ADF also, right? Mm, yes. So I think we have angle AYX is angle BYX, um, which uh, BYX is the same as angle ABE. Um, and yeah, I mean, I mean that, that basically, um, which is ABE, which is ABC, which is ADF. So, so basically, um, triangle AYX is similar to ABC, is similar to ADF. And then there's that last step. So, um, so AYX um, so sorry, I'm trying to remember. So so you showed the four points, so A C F G. And A, B, D, E, I think you said are similar, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 
He could, okay, yeah. So since since ADB is similar to AFC, and those are both the tangent, yeah, E corresponds to G. Um, so 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 I'll actually write that. Um, So, so this, this spiral similarity also takes E to G. Because they're constructed similarly. I'll say they're defined similarly. So that's triangle ADB and AFC. So once we know that, we know that that ADF. Um, is similar to AEG. And that solved it. All right, so yeah, that was also an easy one. So we'll see. This one might be harder. Let's see. Um, 